Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Good morning. Welcome to a new edition of our show titled Speak of Africa. Brothers and sisters, we're very, very happy with the support uh, we're receiving from you. You're really doing what we ask you to do. You're sharing the show with so many of your friends and family members. Many people are beginning to know about our show. In fact, we're really surprised with the number of people contacting us daily. And we appreciate that. They contact us. They give us information. So we've always said that we wanted a show that is your show. We wanted just to amplify your voice so that more people can really hear you. The way communication operates today, things are so complicated and sophisticated. But remain blessed because we are here for you. We're going to show you the challenge. We're going to be able to help you so that your voice can be heard far and wide. The days when people could hire public relations firms to, to deceive the people and tell a different story, which is basically telling lies, are over. Which is why for the show of today, we're really going to concentrate on news. But the theme of the news is going to be progress or propaganda. When you look at the messages that we receive, when you look at Africa, most of the messages that we receive from the leaders, they are either messages of progress or messages of propaganda. On the one hand, some leaders are really struggling to build the new Africa using tools that they have. By contrast, on the other hand, you have a group of leaders who are not really making any effort to build their countries, but they are deceiving their people and they are deceiving the world. They think that by telling lies, people will believe that they are doing great when they are not really doing great. So our show is to expose such weak and bad leaders, okay? But before we begin this show of today, we really want to take a moment to commemorate with those migrants who lost their lives in the Mediterranean a few days ago. Pope Francis, the leader of uh, Christendom, the father of the Roman Catholic Church, spent time praying for the souls of the departed. On this show, we always try to bring you the story of migrations, African migrants dying at sea. They are trying to cross the Mediterranean into Europe to look for a better life. Unfortunately, the boats that they always use to cross are very fragile and sometimes they are made of wood and they cannot really sustain such a perilous journey. In the day of today, the 21st century, we don't really know why better boats cannot be put at the disposal of Africans so that they can travel out. But it's more like they keep dying because boats that are not really well equipped. So we feel sorry for those who have died and we know the problem will continue. All what we have to do on this show is to continue drawing your attention to the problem so that you know that more of our people are dying because they are not happy with the conditions in their countries at home, so they are looking for a better life, okay? They want to try to get to Italy, from there they go to other uh, nations of Europe to look for a means of livelihood. So why must this always end in, in death? So it's just like a, an alarm that is being sounded. We need to start thinking that Instead of going abroad, we need to create opportunities for our young people at home. So that's a message the politicians need to hear. The more tragedy strikes, we need to know that we need to create opportunities for our young people at home. If we do this, most of them will not be taking the risk of traveling abroad. They should stay home and have an African dream. Look at the United States of America. How many Americans want to travel to look for a better life in other countries. No, they are happy with their lives because irrespective of the amount of education that they have, they can still find a decent life in their home. They can find decent work, work that can allow them to live well, drive a nice car and live in a nice home. So we need to start challenging ourselves to provide such opportunities for our people, which is why we are really hammering on the point of the migrants who lost their lives in the Mediterranean. At the same time also, one also pray for the souls of the political prisoners in Cameroon 
who were taken away from Konengi and killed. Most people don't even know the whereabouts of these political prisoners. So on this show of today, we also want to take some time to express our sorrow for what they are going through. And at the same time, we also want to draw attention to the plight of people in the Northwest and Southwest areas who are really going through the trauma of civil war. We feel for them and we thank everybody who does something to help these people. Okay? So we really want to make you know this. So, but with the story of today, we're going to start, start with a bright side. We've been talking about industrialization. We've been talking about the need for Africa to embark on the path of industrialization. Industrialization begins with what we call the Industrial Revolution. It looks like the Industrial Revolution has not come to Africa yet. And we are begging that it should come to Africa because we really need it in order for African nations to take off. So it seems this week we saw what has been happening in Kenya and we decided that we have to load the effort of Uhuru Kenyatta, the president. Okay? Because of his vision, Kenya has embarked on the creation of the largest wind farm, turbine wind farm. As you know, the bedrock of any industrialization is energy, electricity. We need it because we have to consume it in order to produce products and services. Without electricity, whenever you have shortages all the time and electricity that is not conducive, which is always being shut down for days, it makes it difficult for you to have any kind of industry. So by having a way to generate more electricity using natural technology like the wind farm, we think Uhuru Kenyatta has done something really great for his people. It's true. Morocco, Ethiopia, and South Africa also have wind farms. But we think that the project in Kenya is the biggest and is the best. And we want more African countries to follow suit because we cannot talk about industrialization when we cannot really generate enough energy to power our industries. So if we're going to have a lot of industries, we need to have the power, okay? We need to have the power. And we need to have modern facilities of power, like wind turbines, okay? So you look at the example of Kenya as a model, the model of excellence. If you want to achieve anything, you need to look at people who have succeeded, then you imitate. Don't try to reinvent the wheel all the time. Look at other countries that are doing well, like Kenya, for example. Kenya has been doing well with tourism, but they are not resting on their laurels. They are looking for other ways to power the economy for the power generation. Okay? So we like what we see in Kenya, and you can see a lot of videos of events that were hosted to celebrate this achievement in Kenya. And we want to share these videos with you because we think whenever there is something good in Africa, we need to tell the story. Today, we again raise the bar for the continent as we unveil Africa's single largest wind farm, the Lake Trukana Wind Power Project. When a country is doing something good, we have to praise them. Okay? We can really say that Uhuru Kenyatta has really done well because when we look at where he has come from, it has not been easy. There was a very contentious election with um, Raila Odinga, but the way Uhuru Kenyatta handled the matter, he treated Odinga like a brother, so they had to sue for peace. And now the country is developing progressively. Raila Odinga is contributing to national development, and we can see many events where Raila Odinga is doing good things for the country. So this is what we want other African countries to emulate. Instead of taking a political opponent and putting him in jail and locking him up, killing him and fueling conflict, try to create a form of rapprochement. Make peace with your fellow brothers. Don't look at political opponents as enemies, okay? Which is the mistake a lot of leaders in Africa make, especially like our good friend, uh, the Lion King who is dying. He always looks at political opponents like enemies. He doesn't understand that they too are the citizens of the country, so they deserve to have a voice. So we like what we've seen in Kenya, and we're challenging other African countries to build energy sources for their countries so that the industrial revolution can take off. 
Life insurance money secrets of millionaires and billionaires exposed. Discover how America's rich and famous exploit these arcane tools to build fabulous wealth. Why should these big white guys have all the fun? Let Prince Ojong, the celebrity author of The Miraculous Millionaire, show you the little understood life insurance way to riches. Are you still doubting the good things that life insurance can do for you? Trust strategies, estate planning, 401k rollover, annuity contract, cash value, education funding, executive benefits, income protection, life protection, living benefits, mortgage protection, tax-free retirement? Think and grow rich with life insurance. Your amazing journey to wealth begins by calling Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. On a positive note again, we like what we see in Algeria. We've featured Algeria many times on our shows, and we always look at Algeria as a country of revolutions. In fact, one of the reasons why we also love Algeria is because of the famous uh, Abel Camus, the existentialist uh, philosopher who really shares a lot of beliefs that we have. But Algeria has gone through a lot of revolutions. First, we had the Algerian War of Independence, where they fought for their independence from France. Then next, we realized that the French ne never really wanted to leave that country, and they we just wanted to stay because of the resources of Algeria. Then more recently, Abdelaziz Bouteflika, the president of uh, Algeria, was forced to step down so that freedom can return to the country. He stepped down peacefully, so we are just saying that Algeria now has taken another move. Similarly to what happened in Rwanda, Algeria now is getting ready to move away from the French system of education to an Anglo-Saxon model. They've realized that the world of science, the world of technology, speaks English. English is not just a form of a code of communication. It is the language of science. It is the language of technology. It is the language of development. What the Americans did was they took the British heritage and built upon it. So a lot of stuff is really happening. The Algerians now want to benefit from this model. Most of the Algerian students have repudiated the French model. They feel like France is not taking them anywhere. France is instead taking away their resources. So they want to em em embrace a model which is more for the future, Okay, so they are going to be looking at English as a way to study and get their degrees so that even when they travel abroad, those degrees can really be recognized. So what we are presenting to you now are images of progress. Okay, so this is what we call progress. Progress is when you have development that is positive on a political scale, economic and a social scale. Okay, so this is what we look at progress. Let's get it on. If you're searching for a house, call up my man Prince O'Jone, the best in real estate. Take it from your guy's shape. When I say his services are the best in the state, where he's born, he even take care of your tax forms, back refunds. So come, get your business done. Consultations, financial organization, fast processing, no waiting. This man is amazing. The Prince. Now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. On the other hand, you're also going to see the lack of progress. You have a country like Cameroon, which instead of working to build the country, the leader is playing tricks. He misuses the resources of the country, but he tells people, I am the strength of experience, la force de l'experience. Okay, if you say you are the force of, ex uh, <laughs> the strength of experience, la force de l'experience, we, so we have a vignette of images that you can see how experience has helped the Cameroonian people. For over 37 years, 
We have so many images which we want to show you. You can see how experience, the experience of this political leader has taken Cameroon to dizzying heights of progress. Okay? You're going to see the roads are so bad, the infrastructure is just horrible. So there are so many images that we want to just show you like a movie. There are so many you, that you can just watch as we're talking to you. The images are just terrible. They just show you, it's just like the worst part of the third world. The roads are bad. Even cars cannot ply on any road because the roads are just horrible. Potholes are just everywhere, and dust and mud everywhere. So when you look at what is happening in other countries, you say to yourself, why has this guy not been able to build anything? Last week, we were talking to you about the need to have a good hospital, and some of you, even physicians, you contacted us, and you wanted to share a lot of information with us. And we said, yeah, the challenge for most Africans today is, when you are in power, why not try to build hospitals for your people? If you don't build your country, when you're sick, you keep traveling abroad looking for a cure. So this is a shame. And that's what is the plight of Cameroon. Their leader keeps traveling all over the place looking for cure. He should have even built a nice hospital. And most of the physicians are telling us they are ready to work with any leader in Africa to build a nice hospital. They will contribute ideas and they will work to make this a success. Okay? So when you say your country is going to emerge in 2035, we have so many images to show you that that's just propaganda. 2035, there's no way that you become an emergent nation. That's just a dream that will never happen. It is just like a mirage. The images of the country as it is today are so terrible that when you look at them, there's no way you're going to think that in less than a few years, this is going to become an emergent nation. No, that's not going to happen. That's just a, a lie. Similarly, you can see that this leader has just hired boys from a lying Ted Cruz campaign. If you remember the last presidential election, uh, 2016, in the United States, Ted Cruz was one of uh, the candidates running for president. Ted Cruz is from uh, Texas. He's a very brilliant uh, lawyer and uh, some of the people who knew him during his law school days said he was a very bright student. But most of the people working for him were not that bright. Uh -huh. They were not that bright. Now that they lost the election, they went and formed uh, a company called Axiom Strategies and Cloud Public Affairs. So this company now is like a lobbying firm. They cannot really do good work. When I even look at the work that the firm has done in the United States, they cannot really build for big money, the way other lobbying firms do. So they just build just chicken change. That's what they make. So they felt it was easy now to go to Africa and get clients. And who is the first target? Paul Bia of Cameroon. He wants to clean his image. But these guys cannot really succeed in cleaning Paul Bia's image because the image is just too dirty. No public relations <laughs> operation can really clean the image of this guy, because the image is so terrible, it's so terrible, terrible, terrible. So these guys don't even know what they're doing, so they are not part of the prime time. So they have to go to a remote place in Africa and get a big job, and they're paying them over 55000 a month. So that's a really good uh, payday. But I know this is not going to last, because their paymaster is going to see that uh, he's not getting what he, he paid for, and he would terminate a contract because they're not going to be able to deliver. First, they don't know anything about Africa. They don't know anything about Cameroon. This is a dictatorship that is really murderous. They kill people every day. How are you going to redeem such a, a, a regime, a rogue regime? I know some of them have worked for like uh, Ferdinand Marcos, but this guy is even worse than Marcos. A lot of people are looking at this guy as the new uh, Adolf Hitler. Okay? You guys know what Adolf Hitler did in Europe. So most of these guys look at him like Adolf Hitler. So how can you redeem Adolf Hitler? No, historians, you guys know history. Nobody can tell you that Hitler is a good guy. Mm -hmm. So you can hire the best public relations firm. First, I know that David Poliansky and his guys are not as smart. So how are they going to be able to clean this guy's image? The World Wide Web is filled with so many activists who populate the internet with negative images and articles about 
the rogue regime of Paul Bia. So by hiring these guys, Mr. Paul Bia is just wasting his money, okay? Because we have so many images, especially on this show of today. We have images that will show you what daily life in Cameroon looks like. You can see how the average person leads his life. The average guy in Cameroon, how does he live? We have the pictures to show you, and the pictures are just so many. So as I say, a picture speaks louder than a thousand words, okay? When you look at these pictures, you can tell that there's nothing that can be done to make this guy look like a good guy, because the pictures are just too many, okay? You see the pictures of the average Cameroonian waking up in the morning, even drinking water. They have to go to dirty wells. They said drinking water has some properties, okay? It has to be clean, but the water these people are drinking is just terrible. It's red. Good water has no color. Well, the, the water which my people are drinking is filled with colors like red, okay? So how are you going to redeem a guy like this? So it's really sad when I look at uh, the guy wasting money even today hiring such lobbies. I know guys like Squire and Barton have been trying to help him, but they have not been able to do a good job because this guy is so negative, okay? So negative, so bad. He's the worst client you can have. In fact, any professor of public relations will tell you this is the type of client that you should not touch with a 10-foot pole because you, you cannot really do anything to redeem him. <laughs> this is, as they say in French, en cas duté. There's not much you can do to help such a client. So by taking his money, you are just being a missionary who doesn't really appreciate human rights, and you're going to see that you're not going to take this money for long because it's going to blow in your face. And after this, no other sensible politician in Africa will want to work with a firm like this. So it just shows you that this is a cheap firm. They don't have any repute. If you even look at where they are situated in Washington, D.C., that's in a bush area there in Southeast, okay? <laughs> so when I look at this, I just laugh. I know that a firm that is in Southeast, what can they really produce? This is just a low-class uh, firm, okay? All what they know is lying, 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 Ted, lying, Ted, lying, Ted, okay? So they keep lying, lying every day. So they will keep lying, but we have the images that we can share with you so that you know what the truth is. If you want to see the handiwork of Mr. Paul Beer, we have a lot of images of Cameroonians suffering in the forest. All their villages, the villages have so much grass, grass has grown everywhere, all the houses have been burned, then grass has overgrown, taller than even the houses. So the people are now living in forests. You can see how they are struggling to make ends meet by little food that is smuggled to them. They try to live on a daily basis. There's no hope. The people, so you can just see, how can a, a guy like this get a positive image when you can see so many images of amber bush people? We have so many of these images so you can see how the people are living in the forest. Uh -huh. Most of these people used to have their small villages. They had airborne water. And they were living well. They had electricity. But today, they are living in the forest. Okay? They are living in little, little huts in the forest, makeshift kind of huts in the, in the forest. They don't have any medicine. So most of them are dying of disease. But it's because of the dictatorial regime of uh, Mr. Pobia. And it looks like there's no end in sight. The genocide continues to go on. So while countries like Kenya and Algeria are taking strides to progress and move ahead, Mr. Bia is instead using propaganda and lies to feed his people and the world. But how long will he be able to present these lies to the public? Well, maybe the Bulu uh, people are gullible, but the average Cameroonian knows the truth. They know that they are living a nightmare. And which is why we want you to share this video and we want to share a lot of these images with you which we got from the ground. You see people living in huts just like animals. <laughs> why? Because they dare to challenge Mr. Bia that they want to change the form of the state. They want to have a voice in the way their country is run. They don't want Mr. Bia to dictate everything to them. When they, they do this, Mr. Bia sends soldiers to kill them on a daily basis. So we have all these images to show you, and when you see these images, share them with your friends. 
And we're asking you, share these images. Share. You're already doing it, but do it more. Because you have joined a movement who want to make more people aware of what is happening in this part of the world. So that people of conscience can see, and maybe there will be time to take some action. Because right now, the international community is sleeping. You know, the international community is very hypocritical. They see people dying every day, yet we have American firms that are still going to Cameroon to do business. So that tells you that these people like to suck the blood of Cameroonians. So this is what we call blood money. When you see people dying in Cameroon every day and you're going to Cameroon to do business, then you are a bloodhound. And so we say such business people are corrupt and you need to look at them. So in the future, we'll even organize a campaign so that you don't you boycott their products and services in the United States. So we think we've spent some time to give you a vignette of what is really happening. It's like two shows in one. You see the countries that are making progress by doing positive things. Then you see a country like Cameroon that just concentrates on propaganda. Propaganda is deceiving people with a worldview that is false. Okay? You cannot be telling us that Cameroon is going to emerge in 2035 when everywhere you go, there is lack of development. Anything that even President Amadou Aijo built has collapsed. You have not built anything to add to it. And what we can tell you is subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. If you subscribe and share this video, more people will become aware of what is happening to the Cameroonian people. And we hope that Moses will go to Cameroon and God will listen to Cameroonians and Cameroon will be delivered from the bondage of La Republic. Thank you very much. Selling a service or a product? Need buyers? Use the African Nation TV as a channel to reach many viewers. Act now and call Prince Ojong at 240-350-1131. That's 240-350-1131. Act today.